Hey Trademark, I want to connect with you guys. We want you to be a part of our community. We want you to know what's going on every week here at Trademark. We don't want you to miss anything. So connect with us. Join our remind list by texting at MCA Trademark to 81010. That number of messages on the bottom of the screen right here. Due to the magic of post-production, I think it's going to be there. Pretty confident. Is it there? I hope so. Text at MCA Trademark to that number and join our remind list so you can stay up to date on everything happening at MCA Trademark. We'd hate for you to miss even one thing. See you in just a few moments for tonight's service. Hey, Trademark Service is starting in just a few minutes. I cannot wait for what's gonna happen tonight. I'm looking forward to this night's service. But I wanna remind you, on August 9th, MC of the Church is relaunching in person 
outdoors at 9 a.m. We'll have a one service for our whole church in person. Everyone gathered together in one place, 9 a.m. August 9th. So make sure you come and are a part of that Sunday. It's going to be an awesome day. Make sure you're tuning in and staying a part of MCA The Church. Trademark service is just a few minutes away. I know it's really difficult in an online format to pay attention to service, and so I wanna encourage you to just eliminate some distractions tonight. Maybe silence your phone, let your friends know that you are busy in the middle of something else. Let that girl know that you'll text her right back in just a few minutes after you finish this service. I want you to get all that God has for you tonight, and so I'd hate for you to be distracted by a device or by, a, or, or by just all the different things that can distract us and dissuade us. So make sure you are preparing yourself for tonight's service. It's gonna be awesome. See you in just a few minutes. Trademark is a place that's all about Jesus. We, we love to sing about him, we love to talk about him, we love to pray to him, we love 
to learn about him and study him. Hey, if during this week you have felt like you want to grow closer to God, reach out to us, talk to us, let us know. We want to help you on your spiritual journey. We want to be your spiritual guides and help you find and encounter Jesus in more real ways. If you have questions about what it means to follow Jesus, about what it look like, looks like to fall in love with Jesus, about what it means when we say Jesus is better than anything in this world, reach out to us at MCA Trademark on Instagram. You can also contact us on mcathechurch.com. Let us know that you're interested and we will connect with you. We want to help you out on your spiritual journey. Love you, Trademark. See you in just a few minutes. Hey Trademark, service is starting in just a few minutes. I just want you to know from the bottom of my heart how much I miss you guys. It is so tough to be camped from a screen. It's tough to not be in person. I miss the, the authentic summer camp experience. Just, just wanted you to know that I love you and I miss you. And I want to invite you, reach out to me. Reach out to your other Trademark leaders. Reach out to Pastor Gabe. We want to hear from you. We want to talk with you. We want to know how you're enjoying camp. What, what, what's been great? what has been challenging for you in this time, what messages have spoken to you, what's challenged you, reach out to us. You can message us at MCA Trademark. You can get a hold of us through the mind, or if you have our number, you can text us directly. We want to hear from you. We want to talk to you. Love you guys. See you in just a few minutes. Hey Trademark, one last thing before service begins. This is a massive announcement. I am excited to let you know that we are relaunching Trademark, Wednesday night services in person, all together under one roof. We're gonna be safe, we're gonna take the necessary precautions, we're, we're not gonna be stupid with it, but we are back together in one place, August 19th. Put that date in your calendar, invite all your friends, let everyone know, August 19th, Trademark is back. See you in just a few minutes for service.
It's Wednesday, my dudes. Welcome to night three of youth camp. Thanks for tuning in. We're already halfway through camp. Can you believe it? It, it seems like it is just flying by. I know I've enjoyed everything so far. I can't wait for everything that is to come. If you've missed anything, you can tune in to MCA The Church YouTube page. You can also check our IGTV at MCA Trademark. And all of our content is posted there. So if you miss anything, if you miss any breakout, Anwar did an awesome job. Not what I was expecting, but, but still so good and so powerful. So make sure you watch this breakout. Make sure you, you catch up on anything you missed. Last night's and Monday night services are also available on YouTube and the sermons are available on IGTV. So make sure you watch all that stuff. I hope you're enjoying the scavenger hunt, it, participating and uh, solving those clues. I hope I made them adequately difficult. I had a great time making them, so I hope you're having a good time trying to crack them and solve them. Uh, so many great things going on, so many great things to come. But for now, it's time for this evening's message and service. Pastor Gabe has a great message in store for you guys from, you guessed it, Colossians chapter one. Why don't we stand to our feet and begin with a time of worship. Let's sing this song. People come together, strangers name.
say that we just need to sit this moment for a second and examine our hearts. What parts of your heart have you not yet surrendered over to God? Is there any hidden part? Is there any area where you're still trying to hold on and maintain control? On the kick drum. Come, 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 come. <laughs> we good? All right, this is 20 questions. Everything's rolling. Welcome come. to summer camp. We're live. Welcome to summer We're camp. Live. Welcome to summer camp. Good evening, trademark. It is time for 20 questions. Titus and Jocelyn are here with me. Uh, just so we're all on the same page, these are 20 quick, rapid fire questions. They have no idea what I'm about to say. You guys excited? No idea. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> I guess. Are yeah, you nervous? A little. 
yeah, maybe. Let's go. Know, let's All right, thing. let's hit it. We're, oh, we're starting off deep right here. What is your deepest fear? Oh, man. I think being taken. Like Liam Neeson style? Oh, yeah, like taken and like, I mean, that's pretty deep, right? Yeah, like. And this is real, is uh, a 500 yard hole where I have to, the in golf, a 500 yard hole where I have to clear like 230 yards and there are houses on the right hand side because you guys, I'm a decent golfer, I'll be honest, but I've broken two, three windows in my life and they all cost a couple hundred dollars <laughs> and I actually hit a house like last month and it, it literally- And he's like, a really good golfer. My, my heart drops <laughs> every time and tight house. That was completely different. He said <laughs> deepest fear. The, I don't know, that, I, like most relevant fear that I feel the most is probably that. Which of you is the better driver? I mean, just be honest with the camera, let them know. Okay, I would say me. I have less on my record, but who drives the most and has more opportunities to be a worst driver? Titus. What's your favorite candy bar? Mine is definitely Sweet Tart Ropes. I like um, sour, like Sour Patch Kids type thing. That's probably not my favorite, but my favorite like candy bar is a Snickers because if I was like gonna use a candy bar to replace a meal, a Snickers is, I think, the closest to the most nutrient. It's all about I, I efficiency. About that. Or take five. Yeah, or take five. <laughs> Who are five people you were closest to? Just name them real quick. A husband. Husband. A sister. My mom. Uh, uh, five? <laughs> That's really hard for me. <laughs> um, that number four spot. I don't know. Four or five tough. Um, I'll go my, my siblings, so that takes up oh, one, that's two, cheap. three. Yeah, that takes up three spots. Oh, that's so um, And then I'll say my wife, 100%. <laughs> oh, I'm four. You almost got no, one. I'm four. One. If you notice, I went like, uh, my iPhone. <laughs> that is terrible. Like, if I'm being honest, that's like, terrible. Just Adam be up there. I, mean, I only like, have it's one. Hard. It takes up. Yeah. No, you are. Definitely. Like, we're just you close to start. All the trademark kids would be on there, but I legit haven't seen you guys in eight months. So, I, God, we, we drifted, I'll be honest. All right, what is it. the first thing you do if you won the lottery? Tithe. Absolutely. Yeah, tithe. Would 10%. For sure tithe. Okay, what's the silliest thing you've ever argued over? We had a pretty silly one last week where we were just both throwing out like meaningless stats that we had no idea that were actually accurate, but we were throwing them. Do you remember last week? I don't even remember what it was about. He, thro he throws out meaningless <laughs> stats and I'm like, show me the research. Like, where did you come up with that stat? Uh, and he was like, well, I mean, I'm sure it's out there. And I'm like, it's not a stat. <laughs> I don't know how real this is, but like. It's not a thing. This is a really stupid argument. It got pretty heated. We I, I remember what it was. I guess I'll say it. We can ask it if we need to. I think the biggest, stupidest argument that we have over and over again is about tech equipment. And it's just like, <laughs> okay, can we stop talking about this? Like, you just keep rambling on and on about tech gear. And I'm just yeah. like. Yeah, I'll we'll yeah. go with that one. All right, how did you become a Christian? How did I become a Christian? I went on a Holy Sweat. Shout out to Holy Sweats. Um, I was in, Ad we were serving at Adams Church in Northern California. I was a going into my freshman year of high school. Um, and I realized that I grew up in the church, and I was a part of church, and that Jesus was a poor part of me. But I want to say I had given my life complete control over to God. And so I did it. And the Oakdale, was it Oakdale Christian yeah. Church? Oakdale. Um, I grew up going to Awana uh, when I was younger. Um, but then totally drifted away and by the grace of God ended up at Bible College, a university that was a Christian university. I was required to get my minor in biblical studies. Um, that definitely wasn't something I was going for necessarily, but it, it paid for me to go to school and I had a softball scholarship and stuff like that. And I think I was supposed to go to that university because it really brought me back, um, brought the curiosity back, brought the understanding back, and the desire to pursue God better. So I really think um, I God sent me there with the mission to um, transform my life. And to get married to Titus, so you forgot that part. Of course. We met in college, <laughs> of course. You forgot that aspect. Yeah. Speaking of marriage, in a movie about your life, 
what actor or actress would play your spouse? Matthew McConaughey. He, <laughs> My he favorite. loves I love Matthew, Matthew McConaughey. If he could be one person, it would be Matthew McConaughey. Is all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm not that good. Best role. Swagger. Best role? I don't know. I can't go that far. Um, yeah. What would you say? Yeah. Uh, Interstellar. Oh, uh, okay, that, that was, was on my one. my brain. I was gonna say the space one, but one. I was like, I don't know. She loves Jessica Biel. Oh, I love I, Jessica Biel. Is like Jessica yes. Biel in Seventh Heaven. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yes, Jessica Biel. Yes, Jessica Biel. Hey, how do you want to be remembered? Steady. Guys, shut up. I was there, present, and generous. I want my Titus was a steady and generous father, friend, Christian, husband. I'm a very I'm an emotional support dog. <laughs> um, I think. My friends know that they can talk to me about anything, that I will um, weep with them, like I will hurt with them, and it's nothing super compelling. This is what I want to be remembered for, but I think people will look back and remember me for someone um, who is just there. That's good. Is cereal a soup? <laughs> no, cereal is cereal. <laughs> no, that's easy. Soup's warm. <laughs> if, I had, if I had warm, milky cereal, that would be terrible. What is your spouse's least favorite chore? I mean... <laughs> Picking up my hair. <laughs> he finds my hair everywhere and he's just like, I just want you to know like how much I love you right now. <laughs> uh, my wife's least favorite chore is... No, actually, you don't like the dishes that much. Oh, I hate dishes. The dishes are not, I like or taking out the trash. <laughs> no, I mean like because I would never make her do that. I mean, so. and that goes back to my fear of being taken. Like yeah. I don't want to go out by myself and take the trash. So. so you go, how do you study the Bible? I think journaling is the best way that I study the Bible. Following along with someone who's walking me through a piece of scripture, but also journaling my thoughts and journaling like um, the breakdown of that really helps me to understand it. And uh, I'm gonna say slowly. My favorite way to read the Bible, and when I'm at my best, and like I would say most confident in my Bible study habits, and understand, I just read very slowly. Like, and sometimes that's literally a first a day. And we were actually talking in the car, like reading the verse, like for God to love the world. Like, all right, let's think about that. Like, God loved the whole world. What is the world? It, that's my favorite way. That's a really lame example. Have you ever experienced deja vu? Yeah. Absolutely. You guys I, got 30 minutes? <laughs> deja vu, yeah. And I have really intense dreams. Like, Titus will tell you, like, I have crazy intense dreams. And so I feel like a lot of my deja vu comes from, like, my inability to remember if that was a memory or if it was a dream or something that I had. Would you rather never play or always lose? Oh, always lose. Always oh. lose. Yeah, always lose. Okay. Have you ever experienced deja vu? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Got him. The business guy. Got him. <laughs> no, no, this is his first interview. I'll tell you. He's, he's been around the block a few times. If one animal was made the size of an elephant, which would be the scariest? Yeah, why aren't oh, elephants scarier, to be honest? They're so big. I love like, elephants. I know, they're my favorite animal. They're sweet. But I think a snake. I hate snakes. And if it were the size of an elephant, I'd freak out. <laughs> yeah, I I don't have to agree with that. If there were spiders as big as elephants, I think that'd be pretty scary too. Oh, that was my second one. What's your favorite place that you've ever been? This is good. You guys go all over the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, our honeymoon. That was yeah, sick. Guys, <laughs> that was, that best, was awesome. Man, like <laughs> we went to the Bahamas for our, our honeymoon, and that was a blast. If you were stuck in an elevator and were forced to listen to only one song, what would it be? I have my Christian answer, Amazing Grace. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is the best song ever made. Greatest song ever made. And then Human Nature, Michael Jackson. Or, uh, uh, actually, I might I might take back the Human Nature, Love on Top by Beyonce. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. Okay, my favorite song right now is How It Was by Yost. Like, yeah, totally. It's chill pop, like, I, do not get tired of chill pop. What is one right now movie series that you recommend everyone watch? Um, I would say Nice, and that's specifically for women and girls. Um, we often, as girls, you know, get called names if we aren't, you know, nice. 
and there I've learned that they're I, I'm a people pleaser I, I want to you know I want to be someone that people like and that often um, gets difficult when I'm faced with a challenge um, and I want to say no but I don't want to be but I want to be nice and um, I've learned the difference between being nice and um, being kind and there's there's a difference between nice niceness and kindness and that I think that really has really changed um, my perspective on how I treat people. Uh, Love Does by Bob Goff. I'm not going to say it's the best, or, but it, the simplicity of um, falling up to Christ and just the simple answers that he gives, I think it's so practical. And there's a lot, I would just call better ones, but I would try to that one. Thank you, Titus. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thanks for sitting down with oh, me. Oh, doing this? Was, this was, oh. Uh, that's hey, wow. You're welcome. He's well, a little wow. stiff. That's I'm trying to listen right to right there. Listen Secret handshake with your spouse. Yeah. That's great. Hey, thank you guys so much for sitting down. I enjoyed this conversation. Hope that you guys did too. Yeah. Bye. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye. Hey Trademark, welcome to night three of camp. We're so glad that you're going through camp this week. I hope that you're enjoying it as much as we are. I hope that you're loving all the, the guided prayers and the breakout sessions. I hope you're staying up on the scavenger hunt so you can get the prize at the end of the week. Uh, lots of cool stuff. We're just doing the best we can to make this week uh, the best week of the year, even in the middle of COVID-19. So we're glad you're here. Uh, you should know by now, but we're in Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. And I'm going to be preaching on verses 19 and 20. Verses 19 and 20 tonight. Colossians chapter 1. Verses 19 to 20, and if you're taking notes, and everyone should, we encourage you to do this, every single sermon, breakout, everything, uh, the title of this message is Guided with a Purpose, Guided with a Purpose, uh, Colossians 1, verse 19, I'm going to get right into it, I got a lot of notes, so I don't want to overextend my time, uh, Colossians 1, verse 19, it says this, For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. So we talk about this all the time. We use this phrase, but it's good to continue to write this down to get this in your heart and head. Sin messed everything up. Sin messed everything up. And in some ways, the, the reason this verse is so powerful is because we can go all the way back to Genesis 3 to see Adam's original sin, where sin entered into the human race. And in his sin, sin entered our world. It entered and, and corrupted all of us. It even corrupted the earth itself. Everything was affected by sin because sin messed everything up. And it's now passed on generation to generations, and, and, and we say things like this, you are a sinner not because you sinned. You don't become a sinner the first time you sinned, but rather you are first a sinner and therefore you sin. So sin is, is a part of us from birth. Uh, you were a sinner. I, I tell people all the time, um, I, I know my son was a sinner even before birth because he was such a jerk kicking Brittany when he was in the womb. So you can see the evidence of sin even pre-birth, right? And, and so you, you were born with this sinful nature. It goes all the way back to Genesis 3. And here we are in Colossians, and we're realizing that all this way through the Bible, uh, that this is a big deal, that sin separates us from God. Sin severs the relationship we were to have with God. And, and the most important relationship anyone could ever hope for and you were doomed from birth. You were doomed from birth. You, th this relationship with God, this holy, righteous God, cannot have a relationship with you or I as a sinful human being. And our sin traces back every single generation all the way to Adam. Sin messed everything up. Um, and, and so we see in Isaiah 59 too, this kind of just, this verse that just sits heavy. It, it says this, Isaiah 59 too. 
but your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. Then we see it repeated. This idea that, that, that we're separated from God, that sin has this effect not just on the world around us, not just on the way we act, but it actually has a relational effect between us and God. In, in Romans 5, 12, Paul says it pretty bluntly here in the New Testament. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. You can write this down. Not only did sin mess everything up, Sin still messes everything up. Sin still messes everything up. And, and, and what, what Paul is making really clear in our text today in Colossians 1, 19 and 20, is that you and I were not enough to bridge the gap. You and I on our own were not enough. Even our good deeds are tainted by sin. Even our best efforts fall short of the glory of God. So, so we need something different because we can't do it on our own. We need a perfect man. But, but no one is perfect at all. Like there, there's no one that's perfect, not even, not even one. Sin is in all of us. So then the question comes up as you kind of work your way through the Bible. And if you've been in trademark for the last couple of years, we've been working our way through the Bible. But this question might stir for some people as they study God's word, that, then are we all lost? If sin messed everything up and it goes all the way back to Adam, where sin entered the human race and it's just passed down and passed down and passed down. And there's nothing we can do to earn uh, God's grace. There's nothing we can do to bridge the gap between us and God. Are we all just doomed? Are we all just lost? Are we really doomed from birth. And, and, and here's the deal. God, before time began, he planned for Jesus to come. It's important to, to know that, that Jesus wasn't an afterthought. Jesus wasn't a plan B or plan C. God wasn't, wasn't looking over the world as time kept going on, going, oh man, this is getting out of control. What should I do? But before time began, God had you in mind. He had a plan for salvation, for, to reconcile this separation between us and God. It goes all the way back before time even began. And so what we realize, and what Paul is drawing our attention to again, is if human beings are to be saved, if you and I are to ever experience salvation, if we're ever to be reconciled to God, if we're ever to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father, then, the, the, then God must do all the work. The triune God must do all the work. It, nothing that we do, because everything we do is tainted by sin, nothing we do will ever be enough we are fully reliant on God to step in and do the work for us. And so we know, and, and, and many of you have heard this. If not, you'll hear it for the first time tonight. But Christ's death is able to save because he is the one in which the fullness of deity dwells bodily. He's God in flesh. On Monday night, I read you um, John chapter 1, 1 through 14, where we see that Jesus took on flesh. He's God in the flesh. And so now we have a man, a perfect man, but he's also God. He's, he's fully God and he's fully man. So through the incarnation, through Jesus becoming man, the son of God has made God's glory to dwell perfectly and fully in Christ Jesus, which is miraculous, of course, but we need a miracle to save us from our sin. We need a miraculous savior to come, and Jesus does that, and only God could forgive sin, and only man could pay its price. And so we have this unique thing that we need. We need someone who is able to forgive sin, and we need someone who is able to pay the price, and so Christ accomplished what no other man, or in this case God, could. He did what no one, no God, no ideology of God, nothing. He did what was impossible for everyone else, because he was 100% man, and he was 100% God. First John uh, chapter 3, verse 5 says, You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. So Jesus came with a purpose. We're guided by this purpose. We're guided with a purpose. Jesus came with a purpose. You know he appeared to take away sins, and in him there was there, in, in him there is no sin. And so in, in Colossians here, where, where Paul's talking about, uh, I want to read it to you again, get it fresh in, in your mind because I read so many texts, but in verse 19 it says, For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. 
and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. Uh, the, the, the glory that we see here belongs to Jesus. It, it doesn't belong to us at all. And we can get really, really sidetracked with this, but, but the glory belongs to Jesus. It's not about us. Write that down. That's good to write down. It's not about me. My salvation, it's not about me. The glory that's involved in my salvation, it's not about me. It, it, it's not about us. If we strive to add our own efforts to the work and glory of Christ, then we mock and once again fall short of God's magnificent glory. If any part of you thinks that you, you did something to earn your salvation, you did something to tap into salvation, then you mock the glory of God and once again you fall short in your sin. It's a, it's a big deal. Remember, we talked about this night one, that, that Paul is writing to address this issue, that it's always Jesus, it's only Jesus. He is supreme. He is worthy of your life. He is Lord over all. It's not about you. There's nothing you or I can do to add to or to achieve any portion of our salvation. It must be and is fully God. If we turn to anyone, a person, a, a saint, a, a leader, or anything, our works, our, our, our plan, our hearts for salvation, that makes God to be a liar. If that's our approach to life, that we have to do it, it makes God to be a liar when he says that the fullness of his glory dwells only in Jesus. Only in Jesus so, so the Christians, we need to understand this, and this is where it gets good. It, it kind of sounds aggressive at first, but here's where it gets good. Christians don't fight for the love of Jesus. We don't earn the love of Jesus. Just like we don't earn our salvation, we don't earn his love. We, 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 we don't earn it. And, and this is so powerful because I, I think most of us can relate to a time where we felt like we had to earn someone's love or we had to earn someone's appreciation or recognition. Or we had to do something, we had to behave a certain way, achieve a certain goal, accomplish something great so that we could be recognized, or, or, or even further than that, that we could be loved. And in many ways, especially in our culture today, we are taught that that's how you get love. That's how you receive love, appreciation, recognition, praise from others. But that's not how we receive love from our Father. Christians do not need to fight for the love of Jesus. As saints who still fight against sin every day, and that is a fight. That's a fight we do, where we fight against sin every day. But we can easily fall into that trap that our obedience, that our victory over sin, somehow makes us worthy of salvation and love from our Father, and that's just not true. So yes, we fight against sin. That's another sermon, perhaps. But in our fight against sin, the goal of that is to defeat sin, not to earn the love of God. We're already loved by God. And his love helps us to fight against sin. You don't have to earn his love. You simply receive his love. He gives it freely. He gives it to those whom he loves. He, he gives his love. You simply just are the recipient of that gift. The, the, the battle with sin is real, but the battle for the Father's love is not. And, and there's something that I, I think is important as we're halfway through camp tonight. I think some of you have been Christians for a long time, and maybe you're still putting pressure on yourself to earn love from God. And, and I'm here to tell you tonight, you can't. You shouldn't, and you can't. You, you shouldn't spend your life trying to earn God's love. You shouldn't spend your energy trying to earn His love. And, and even if if you spent all your energy, all your effort, all your strength, you would never be able to earn the love of God. Instead, he simply gives it to his kids. He simply gives it to his kids. And, and we see this so evident, and this is where Paul is pointing us, when Jesus arrives to redeem the world. When Jesus arrives to redeem the world, to redeem mankind, to bridge the gap between God and us. To, to reconcile us to God. And, and as we work through this, I'm going to give you a few points here, but this was not merely a demonstration of love or a show of force, but Christ actually accomplished his purpose. He actually came and accomplished what he was trying to accomplish. He reconciled God to man, and he brought peace once and for all. He did it. 
He achieved it. I want to give you three things that I think are, are so powerful in this. Of, of Jesus actually showing up, actually living the perfect life, actually dying the sacrificial death, and rising again. And, and why he alone could have accomplished that. Why he alone is worthy of praise. And why we sit with just joy on our face and, and, and worship from our mouth as recipients of his love. And, and so here's the first thing. What the cross, what the cross shows us uh, in Jesus. The cross, the cross shows us Jesus. And the first thing you can write this down. Number one, it's a demonstration of love. The cross shows us Jesus, and it does this through a demonstration of love. A demonstration of love. The, the cross is the greatest demonstration of love the world has ever known. There, there will never be a greater demonstration of love. When, when Jesus was on that cross, he wasn't on that cross thinking of, of general, uh, the general idea of people. He had you in mind. He had your name in mind. If you are his, then on that cross, he was loving you, actively loving you, while being killed for you, hanging there for your sins. The cross was the price that must be paid for love. Again, you can't earn it. You can't pay that price. But Jesus already did. You simply receive it. The, the cross was the price that must be paid. The cross is now a symbol of God's love. This is why Christians, we, we put cross necklaces on. We have crosses on our Bibles. There's crosses above our church. Because the cross is a symbol of God's love. And, and then under that, if you ever doubt God's love for you, if you ever doubt if God loves you, if you ever doubt that you're not enough, which of course you aren't, but God simply just loves you. But if you ever doubt that, simply remember the cross. And, and, and the cross shouts, it just shouts God's love over you. Romans 5, 8 says this, But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How does, how does God show his love? He died for you before, you before you ever wanted him. He died for you while you were in the midst of your sin. He had your ma name in mind from the beginning of time. He had your name in mind while he was hanging on the cross. He showed his love. He demonstrated his love while he was on the cross. He died for us. It was a demonstration of love. Not only does the cross show us that, but the cross is a demonstration of his strength. It's a demonstration of his strength. He was strong enough to do what no man ever could. He, he, he was strong enough to achieve this. He, he, was, he was strong enough to <coughs> Excuse me. He was strong enough to do what no man ever could. He was strong enough to defeat sin. He was strong enough to endure the mockery that men still give him. The mockery that he endured while he's walking those streets, the mockery from the, the Roman soldiers, and yet still today men mock him and he's still strong enough. It's a demonstration of his strength. He's strong enough to stay on the cross when he could have called legions of angels to, to, to rescue him. And yet he stayed there, loving you and I every moment of that pain. It was a demonstration of strength. He was strong enough to rise again. This is a strength that is it's not humanly possible. This is, a, this is just a God strength. This is, this is God's ability and, 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 and his, his purpose just lived out to live and die and rise for you and die. And if you ever feel weak, rest in his strength. If you ever feel weak, rest in his strength. If, if, you, if you ever feel, doubt God's love, simply look to the cross. And if you ever feel weak, rest in his strength. This is not your strength. You're not strong because you're just stronger than the other person. You're not saved because of your strength. You rest in the strength that he gives. He was strong enough for you. Now you rest in that strength. He was strong enough for you. Now you rest in that strength. Zephaniah 3.17. It comes to mind when you think of this. The Lord your God is in your midst. A mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. The Lord is in your midst. The mighty one who will save. This is a demonstration of his strength. So if you're, if you're taking notes, let me just recap. The cross 
shows us Jesus. Number one, a demonstration of love. Number two, a demonstration of strength. And number three, a demonstration of faithfulness. A demonstration of faithfulness. When Jesus was crucified, that crucifixion reconciled all of creation. Beginning the, the, the process of, of things being set right. That crucifixion was a, a powerful moment. It was the purpose of, of Jesus fulfilled, being seen by, by, by people. He was fulfilling his purpose. This is the promise that's been repeated through the ages, fulfilled in Jesus on the cross. And so write this down. This is powerful. God keeps his promises. God keeps his promises. And you may say, well, what kind of promise are we talking about? We go all the way back to Genesis 3 again. If you've learned anything in Trademark for the last three years, there's a good chance it always goes back to Genesis 3. So we go back all the way to Genesis 3 in verse 14 and, and, and listen to this promise from, from God. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. Now listen to this. I will put enmity between you and the woman. And between your offspring and her offspring, here's the promise. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. The, the promise to crush Satan is fulfilled on the cross. God keeps his promises every time. This, the cross was a demonstration of his faithfulness. Of his ability, his willingness, his commitment, his strength, his love to be true to his word. To crush Satan, God accomplished all he promised on the cross and through the grave. And, and so Jesus redeemed his people. He redeemed you and I. If you're a Christian, Jesus has redeemed us. He's reconciled us. He's made us right with God. He's bridged the gap. He's, he, he's, he's brought our relationship with God back into proper order. It's a, it's a demonstration of his love, but it's more. It's certainly a show of strength, but it's still more. It's faithfulness, it's purpose to bring peace between God and man and all of creation. Not just man, but the fullness of the heavens and the earth, as he says here in Colossians. Redeemed by the blood of Jesus, the perfect sacrifice. Yes, it's a demonstration of love. Yes, it's a demonstration of strength. But, but finally, we see that it's a fulfillment of a promise. It's, it's the promise um, shown through his faithfulness. It's a demonstration of love, a demonstration of strength and a demonstration of faithfulness. We are guided with a purpose. We are redeemed people. Let me read it to you one more time, Colossians 1, 19 through 20. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, Making peace by the blood of his cross. Making peace by the blood of his cross. I, I want to close with these just last few remarks. Stop trying to accomplish what only Jesus could. Stop trying to accomplish what only Jesus could. Stop trying to win or earn your salvation. Stop trying to, to find your peace or, or satisfaction through whatever power or means you have. Just stop that. Stop that. Give your life to Jesus. Receive the gift of freedom. Be brought into that relationship and rest in God's love for you. Be strengthened by God's strength demonstrated for you. Walk with, with purpose in your own life because you've seen Jesus fulfill his purpose on the cross. So now we can be a demonstration of love. Now we, his people, can be a demonstration of strength. And we can be a demonstration of faithfulness. All because of him. Peace was brought between you and, and God. Between, between us and God and, and all of creation itself. All through the blood shed on the cross. Rest in God's love for you. Rest in the power of the cross. His love is greater than all your efforts. His might is stronger. His faithfulness will stand the test of time. You can rest in him. 
You can follow him. You can live your life to glorify him because his, his love is greater, his might is stronger, and his faithfulness is tested, and it's true. I want to pray with you, and, and I, want to, I, I want to pray first for salvation. I, I think there still may be some in Trademark, some watching online through this camp, who have not stepped into that relationship with Christ. That, that relationship where they realize, oh, this is true. And it's not just true because I hear about it in church. It's not just true because I want to feel loved by God. It's true because he accomplished what he said he would. And I want to give my life over to that kind of God. I want to surrender to him as Savior and Lord. I want to follow the God who loves me, who's strong enough to accomplish what he said he would, and actually fulfilled it on the cross. And, and, and if that's you... You simply just need to give your life to Jesus. You, you repent of your sins. You lay them out before God. You, 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 you pray and you ask him to be Lord of your life. You, you have this relationship with God and things will begin to develop and we can walk you through that. Message us and let us know so we can walk you through that. But you'll begin to love his word and read his word. You'll grow in prayer. Things will start to develop because that relationship has been mended through the cross. It's been mended through the cross. Let us know if that's you. Myself, Adam, one of the leaders, we want to walk you through that. We want to help you there. And then for most of you who probably are Christians, we need to learn to stop earning the love of God, to stop fighting for his attention and realize you already have it. You already have it. Whether you've had a terrible day where you felt like you were nothing near Christ in, in, in how you lived, you were not a Christian at all, and the days where you just spent all day in church and all day serving, in all of those days, you already have the attention of your Father. You already have the love of your Father. And it's proven on the cross. So we need to learn to rest in it. We need to learn to rest in it. And as we rest in his love, as we rest in, in realizing what he's accomplished for us, then we can live a life, a life that that is bold, a life that, is, that is, is beating sin every single day, a life that is packed with purpose because we follow the one who fulfilled his purpose. Let me pray for you tonight. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your word. Lord, we thank you for uh, this camp so far, and Lord, I pray that we've been challenged, we've been encouraged, we've been strengthened. Lord, tonight I think there's two people that, that are, are here and, and listening to this, and, and some of them simply need to start by giving their lives to you. Lord, help them to do that. May it be genuine. May it be completely driven by you. It can't be earned, as we've talked about, but God, may you call them to you. May you open their hearts. May you uh, reveal their sins in their heart that they might give it over to you. Would you give them a love for your word, a love for your people, and a love for you? May they do that on their own at home and, 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 and reach out to one of the leaders or, or myself or Adam. And Lord, for, for those who are already in Christ, who already have this reconciled relationship with you, Lord, I, we wish we didn't feel like we had to fight for love. We had to fight for your attention. But Lord, help us to be able to rest in that. Help us to be able to realize that you've already accomplished it. You've already fulfilled it. We simply live on this side of grace, full of passion, full of purpose, as we follow you, as we're guided by you and loved by you. Lord, help us to rest in that love, to rest in that strength, to rest in your faithfulness. And may that change the world around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, what an awesome message. Thank you, Pastor Gabe. So appreciate you. So appreciate all that you do to lead our students and to lead within our church. I am grateful to have you as a pastor. I'm grateful to have you as a friend. You are awesome. Thank you for tonight's message that spoke to me and encouraged me. It was powerful. So I, I appreciate you and I know the rest of Trademark is right behind me and saying we are so grateful for you. But what an awesome message, guys. Uh, rest in the finished work of Jesus. You don't earn God's love. Th this is a powerful truth from the Word of God. It's so good. This is life-changing if you can get a hold of this. So I would just challenge you for the rest of your evening, uh, as you're doing whatever it is you're going to do tonight, uh, as you're uh, 
falling asleep tonight or maybe early tomorrow morning, just meditate on that truth. The love of God is for you and there's nothing you do to earn it or get it. It's, it's just there. Jesus just loves you. Meditate on that. Hold on to that because that'll change your life. Grab onto that. Thank you, Pastor Gabe. What a powerful word. If you want to hear Pastor Gabe speak again in just a few minutes, we'll be going live on mcofthechurch.com. Same exact platform with tonight's uh, MCA at Home Wednesday Night Bible Study. So you can tune in and watch that. See Pastor Gabe give an awesome message out of Luke and have time of worship and prayer as well. It's going to be good. So feel free to join us for that and stick around. Uh, here's a sneak peek of what's happening tomorrow. In the morning, Moses is going to give us an awesome devotional. It, it's so good. I'll be leading us through another guided prayer. And then in the afternoon, we have the incredible opportunity to sit down and listen to our guy leaders discuss uh, some guys' issues. Titus, Anwar, and Moses sat down and had a, a kind of roundtable discussion on just some really key questions that guys are always asking. But ladies, don't tune out because if you want to see what a man of God looks like, if you want to see the, the model of, of the kind of man you should be looking for, if you just want to see what a true man, a true servant, a true leader looks like, watch these guy leaders tomorrow night. They are examples. They are open and honest about their struggles, about their marriages. It is just so powerful to hear them talk and just be real about life. So make sure you tune in. Don't miss that. In the evening, Pastor Gabe will also bring us through our evening guided prayer. We have some awesome stuff, but, but thank you for joining us tonight. And I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Have a great night, Trademark.